Welcome to another episode of 20 Minute Playbook, where each week I sit down with an elite performer to dive into their habits, routines, favorite tools, books, and more, all in less than 20 minutes. Today I'm joined by Rachel Sanders, co-founder and CEO of NextGen Vitamin Company Routine. Routine is reinventing the daily multivitamin for everyone from elite NFL and MMA athletes to you and I, all starting with your unique genetic and nutrition profile to create the perfect multivitamin for you. To learn more, visit R-O-O-T-I-N-E.com. This is 20 Minutes in 10 Questions with Rachel Sanders. Rachel, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's awesome to have you. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. So this should be a lot of fun. We try to keep these conversations to 20 minutes, so they're a little bit faster paced. And we'll ask you the same 10 questions in 20 minutes that we asked every guest. How does that sound? And are you ready? Sounds great. Definitely ready. Okay. First question, what have you been excited about or fascinated about recently? Data-driven health. Super excited about where we are and what's to come. Excited to be building in the space, but also love seeing all the founders and new companies that are coming out and recently started angel investing and have been investing in some of them as well. Do you have any favorite products that either you use or that you're working with at Routine? Well, I love Routine. (laughs) That's one favorite. And I've been enjoying Levels and I am hampering to get an eight sleep mattress, but haven't done that yet given the price, but I will. It's coming. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So I'm really excited to hear your answer around this. The question is, what are your superpowers and how do you harness those strengths? Yeah, definitely. So efficiency is my number one, two, and three, I would say. And then I'm also fantastic at distilling down information and understanding what that means for the business and how to get it done. So really around kind of prioritization is another one. On the flip side, what do you struggle with or what have you struggled with over time and how have you improved or worked around those things? One of the things that I'm working on right now is being less of a bottleneck for the company. We've grown, basically doubled our team size in the last six months. And there's a lot of processes that didn't exist before and a lot of things that I owned or was needing to approve. And so working through making sure that I'm taking myself out of certain processes that I don't need to be a part of anymore and really making it easier for my team to be efficient and get the work that they need to get done done. Are you using any playbook there? I've read a handful of different books that kind of offer different playbooks. Are you working from any playbook or are you just kind of feeling it out and doing what makes sense? Yeah, I'm an On Deck fellow now and and they send everyone the book, The Great CEO Within, which is a fantastic book that has not necessarily working from it as a playbook, but it definitely gives a basis for thinking through how to kind of work through those issues. And we're also building remote first. And so there's a lot of new content out there around what makes remote first organizations thrive and really thinking about how to build something, an organization that thrives on async work. So combining things like Notion and Loom and getting rid of as many meetings as you can, stacking any internal meetings that you need to, to decrease the amount of time between meetings and make sure that people can get stuff done whenever it works best for them. Yep. I see a clear through line of efficiency in all those things as well (laughs) well too. (laughs) Yep, exactly. On the habit side, what habits have you experimented with? These could be things you do today. These could be things you've just tried and you want to try again, but habits that have had a positive impact on your life and performance. I've been trying a lot of different productivity hacks, and this goes back to the string of, of efficiency and how to get more work done and be more efficient throughout my day and give myself time back. The top couple that I've been doing is I started building out two no-call days a week about two months ago, which has been a game changer in the amount of stuff that I can get done because I can really focus on things that I need to do and get into that deep work, deep focus side of things, especially as you're thinking about strategy and growth and execution and what needs to be tested and and how do we think about scaling? Those are big questions that you need to have time to think about. And you can't do that if you're having a call every other 30 minutes. On the health side, and this is very related to your work at Routine, but on the health side, what's your approach to diet, exercise, sleep, and how have those things evolved over time? Yeah, data-driven and trackable. That's my overarching approach to all of it. So I want to understand where I am, where I'm trying to go, and making sure I'm looking at the feedback loops that exist. So on the micronutrient side, seeing where my levels are, seeing if the nutrients that I'm taking are impacting the goals that I want to make. On the exercise side, I have a Peloton, which is connected fitness and and trackable from that perspective, as well as just understanding what other kind of biomarkers, whether it's digital biomarkers or tested biomarkers, where my body is and kind of where I need to go. 
I want to ask a sub question of this one, which is, so I'm a parent as well. I definitely feel like if you're a parent, you know that you can't really grade yourself on the same curve. Maybe diet, you can grade yourself on the same curve, but exercise and sleep, there's just very different challenges when you're a parent. So any advice that you would have around health, fitness, exercise, sleep for parents? I don't know if I got less sleep right when I had a newborn or when I was in investment banking, but I would say like both are, <laughs> both are a problem. So as you think about across your health stack, sleep, nutrition, exercise and mental health, when you're a parent and when you have a kid, some of those are going to suffer and you just have to accept it and then think about, okay, what can I do? What can I do today that can help me feel better tomorrow? And if the answer is sleep, great. If the answer is like, I'm not going to get any sleep for the next six weeks, then okay, can you move? Can you take a walk? Can you exercise? Can you try to eat a healthier meal or can you order a salad for takeout instead of ordering a hamburger and just make those diligent choices as much as you can. But yeah, I mean, as a parent, it's hard. You're not going to be perfect and you can't necessarily live to those standards, but you can make healthier choices and things get easier over time. And then you have another kid. <laughs> and then you start it all over again. But yeah, I would say just to plus one that I feel like being compassionate with yourself when you're in those places, because there are some things in life that are malleable. There's other things in life that are not super malleable and kids are putting that in that bucket. Okay. Next question around ideas. What books or podcasts have had a striking impact on the way you think? So the great CEO within that I recently finished reading. It has definitely had a huge impact. We're currently reading The Telltale Brain in the community that I run called the Precision Health Club. We're reading that book that's been super interesting in understanding how our brain functions, less impactful, but more insightful. I always love learning and reading and doing things that change my perspective forever. Travel is one of those. And when you get really good, interesting books, that's another one. Yeah, no, huge plus one of that. For tools, what tools do you use to manage your work tasks and time? And we've talked about things like Loom and Notion. So maybe just add on to that list. We used to use Google Docs. We still use some Google Sheets, but have transitioned mostly everything to Notion, which has been a huge time saver and efficiency improvement across the team. What else? I'm a superhuman user. It's amazing. My inbox zero is not always <laughs> where I want it to be, but being able to triage is super important. And... I'm trying to think, yeah, I mean, those are the main tools that we use as we scale. There's a number of other tools that are out there, but you also don't want to get too complicated. If you can kind of keep everything more to two or three different tools and your team knows how and where to use them, then you can scale pretty quickly with that and then reassess when you need to. Yeah. It's a dream if you can keep that count small and it prevents you from having like a one password with like 120 different login details for a million tools that you're not using. We ask every guest the same three closing questions. And the first one is around success. And the question is, what is your definition of success? And you can take this any direction that you want, but I think it really is just as you think about your life, you think about your work, what is that bar for being successful? So when I think about me as successful and kind of how I've thought about it, you leave business school, especially the one I went to, wondering, okay, what's next? How am I going to be successful? And I think taking those steps and trying, and if it's failing, that's fine, but really trying and putting your all into it is definitely successful and then making an impact. And that's really what we're doing here at Routine too. And one of the ways that you can build impact is help people stay healthier, but there's a ton of different ways to make an impact. But success really looks like that for me and continuing to learn. I'm a lifelong learner. I love learning. So if I'm doing something where I'm learning a new skill, a new task, whatever, then that's successful as well. Yeah. I get the sense you're insanely curious, which uh, I always think is a very good trait. <laughs> so the next question is kind of the flip side of that coin and it's around failure. And the question is, what is one of your favorite failures? And I think what we try to look for there is something that didn't work out for whatever reason, but that taught you something valuable or just pushed you, propelled you in a better direction. The first company I founded. I would just say that it was my leap into entrepreneurship. It was what taught me that I loved it. It was what taught me that I could do it and taught me some of the key things to look out for and how to think about building a team, scaling and all of that. And I would say that was the best failure I've had. So last question and the last questions around gratitude and it's super simple. It's just what are you most grateful for in this phase of your life? My current family work combo. I couldn't be more happy with what I get to do on a daily basis and the time that I get to spend with my family and, and with my, my daughter. I often think back to my investment banking days and know that my current life would not be possible in that position. And building a company that helps other people find great balance, whether that's with family or their own 
personal pursuits because we're building async, because we're building remote first, and because we're making an impact for others, it allows people to kind of fulfill that part of their journey as well. That's a beautiful answer. Where can people go to find out about routines? Where can people go to follow you? You can find us at our website, which is routine.co, spelled R-O-O-T-I-N-E. You can follow us on social at routine underscore co, and you can follow me on Twitter at Rachel S. Sanders. Thank you so much, Rachel. This has been a great little conversation. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. For more from Rachel, listen to our long-form conversation all about the next-gen vitamin company she's building called Routine in episode 61. You can also find the show notes and transcript for this episode on our website at outlieracademy.com slash 62. There you can also explore more incredible interviews with the founders of Rally, Titan, Superhuman, and Primal Kitchen, as well as many of the world's best-selling authors and some of the world's smartest investors. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you right here next week on 20-Minute Playbook by Outlier Academy.